All right, so in this video, I'm gonna go over my schematic for my final year project. So I suppose probably the first thing to do is to just explain to you what this is. So it's a nickel metal hydride solar charge controller. That's what I put here, but it's more like a solar charger at the moment. It doesn't have any load functionality. So anyways, it uses a solar panel input coming in here to charge a battery here. And it, it does that via an Arduino. So this is the schematic for it. I'm just gonna go through how the schematic works. And what I would say is that this is literally the, should I say the limit of my knowledge? I don't know, but this is the best I can do. <laughs> so any better than this uh, is an improvement. For me to improve this, I'd have to learn some more stuff. So I'll just show you quickly here. This is the PCB for it. So this is what I did for my final year project in my third year. I just presented it yesterday and I got great feedback from it. So both the uh, examiners like really liked it. So very happy with that. It worked, nothing broke as well. So I am now completely done with university and I'm starting a new job as a PLC control engineer in uh, two, three days time. So very excited about that. All right, so we need to go through, I don't know how much detail I wanna go into here. I'm thinking that I'm going to assume you know what the various different components do. If you don't, I apologize, but this is quite, it's quite a basic schematic really. So I'll try my best to explain it in, in super detail. So, all right, so here's screw terminals here, which comes in, this is for the solar input here. So one side is grounded, the other side comes in here. Now here we have a diode. This diode is actually this, let me show you, so I can compare it to real life for you. So the solar input comes in here, here, and it comes through this big chunky five amp rated diode. So this diode can carry five amps of current, no problem. And the five amp comes, or the, the solid input comes along this diode here. That diode is just there to make sure that no leakage from the battery, which is over here, comes back through the solar panel uh, at night time or anything like that. It's not really needed because the leakage is gonna be tiny anyways, but I just added it, you know, just to make the schematic look fancier, I suppose, and get a bit of, uh, I don't know, extra brownie points. So then here's a polyfuse. This this is actually this. Oh my gosh, I just bent my temperature sensor up. So this is actually a polyfuse, this yellow fuse here. So what this fuse does is it's a resettable fuse. So normally you would have, let me show you. So here is a normal fuse that you're probably familiar with. It's a three amp rated fuse, right? So once this fuse detects more than three amps of current, it blows up basically. It cuts off, burns out and then current can no longer pass through it, so it disconnects the rest of your circuit. So this does the same thing, this yellow polyfuse. It's rated at three amps again, but what it does is it heats up and cuts off the solar input from the rest of the circuit after it receives more than three amps of current. And then once it cools back down, it resets itself and it will work again. So that way you can solder it into your PCB. You don't need to keep replacing the fuse every time it blows, so that's really good. That's there again as, um, short circuit protection if for whatever reason I don't know the you know for some reason someone inputted <laughs> their power supply and started pumping more than three amps of current it would blow the, it would trip the fuse basically so that's what that's there for and then here is a 30 volt zener diode this is the diode here and this 30 volt zener diode is just if for whatever reason the input reaches above 30 volts then you know that could probably destroy the Arduino even though the Arduino is is kind of protected it would probably still just destroy the Arduino. That's way too high voltage. So if someone tried to put above 30 volts, usually they call it like lightning protection. Like I don't know if there was lightning. I don't know how that would affect the solar panel and cause the voltage to spike massively, but apparently lightning could cause the solar input to go very, very high. So my panel's rated at like 18 volts. And so if for whatever reason there was a lightning strike and the, the, the voltage peaked to like 40 volts or something like that, then Instead of the voltage coming in here to my current sensor, which I'll go over in a minute, it then gets sent straight through to ground. So here we have back current protection, then we have high current protection or short circuit current protection, and then we have high voltage protection. So this whole bit here is our protection circuit, all at our input with our solar panel. So we have our solar in. Now here I have V plus and V minus. These are called connector tabs. They're very, very useful when you're drawing schematics. I just, just discovered them literally a few weeks ago. So V plus here means that I'm connecting to V plus, which if you look is down here. And this is this INA219 current sensor module. So this is this sensor here. Now I'm not sure how much detail I wanna go into, Mm. 
feel free to skip the next minute. I'll just quickly cover the reason why I use this sensor. So I have a video on shunt resistors. So if you don't know what that is, you can watch that video. Here I could have put a shunt resistor, which would be like a, a 0 0.1 ohm resistor. And that way I'd be able to detect the voltage across it using the, the Arduino um, ADC. And then I could work out, based on the voltage drop across this shunt resistor, I could work out what the current coming from the solar panel was and then I could use that to make decisions. However, since the voltage here at the solar input is what 18 volts, you know, 12 volts, 15 volts, something like that, that would blow the ADC. So some microcontrollers only allow, you know, one volt max. The Arduino is five volt max. So this Arduino can take five volts. It, it can read an analog input up to five volts. You can't actually just put a shunt resistor in and try and detect the voltage across it because the voltage across it is going to be eight like it's going to be a high voltage basically it's going to be above five volts the way that this shunt resistor works is it, it has here a small shunt resistor here an smd one and then it has an ic which i don't know what that's rated at but that's able to detect the voltage across this shunt resistor and then work out the current and then send that to the arduino for me so i plan on in future basically reverse engineering this replacing because i can just remove this replacing this current sensor and then using you know a normal shunt resistor but that's what this INA219 current sensor does so this here senses my solar the good thing is you can actually rub out with this it's a pen that you can rub out with <laughs> okay so here my INA219 so V plus and V minus it's sensing the current and then I actually have a, a redundant voltage divider here this voltage divider is actually to uh, read the voltage of the solar panel. So here I've got an 11k voltage divider and it can read the input voltage of the solar panel. However, I already know the input voltage using this INA219 current sensor. Since I'm sensing the voltage drop across this resistor here, I'm able to work out the input voltage anyways. So this is actually a redundant voltage divider. It's not actually needed. It is there though, somewhere, one of these resistors. So I'll try and draw a block diagram for you guys to keep it all kind of neat so we have our input and then we have our protection circuit and then we have our solar sensing circuit and now here we move on to our switching circuit so since this is a pwm modulated charger what it's doing is it takes the solar input across here and through to the battery so this is the battery and what it does is it sends 95 percent it sends 95 percent of the solar input through to the battery and then 5% of the time here, it sends a PWM signal. So we have a 5% duty ratio PWM signal that comes in from D6. And again, using the connector, you've got D6 over here. And that is connected to this D6 pin on the Arduino. So the Arduino is sending a PWM signal, D6, which is, you know, basically, it looks something like this, right? So it's sending a very small pulse signal 5% of the time to this base of this BJT or to the get to the base of the BJT yeah I get the terminology is confused so to the base of the BJT and then so what this is doing in here is that you have the solar input coming in along here and then it reaches here the um either the source or the drain I can't remember which one's which don't quote me let's say source we'll go with source for now but it could be the drain source or drain right you have source gate drain or gate source drain I'm not sure depends on which way it was that's around <laughs> Should I just find out for you? Let me find out. Hang on. All right, so this number two here is the drain, right? So it's the drain, source, gate. So here we have the solar input coming in along here. It reaches the, what did I say it was again? The drain. <laughs> it reaches the drain of the MOSFET. So drain, source, gate. So right now the MOSFET isn't on, so obviously I, I, it doesn't go anywhere. But it comes through this 10K resistor, so it drops the voltage a little bit and then triggers the gate of the MOSFET, turning on the MOSFET. So it's, let's just say that, you know, this BGT is off right now, comes to the MOSFET and then goes through the MOSFET because again, it's turning on the gate and then comes through here. The voltage here is then red. So this here is the, um, this reads the, the voltage of the battery. Okay, so we have a battery sense, which is just sensing the voltage of the battery. And then so it comes again along here and then through into the battery to charge the battery. Okay, so then when that 5% signal is sent to here through to the gate, sorry, to the base, I don't know why we have different terminologies, but to the base of the transistor, then what happens is this transistor turns on. 
when this transistor turns on it basically becomes a short circuit so it's not there and then now what happens is instead of the solar input here coming and going up to the gate of the MOSFET it ground it gets grounded and so the whole solar input is grounded for five percent of the time right so this is how, this is basically how we're switching so we have 95 percent of the time so this is our solar input here we have 95 percent of the time it's going through to the battery and then for a little blip it goes to ground and then again back so we have the vast majority of the solar panel input here coming straight through to the battery and then five percent of the time it's switching and then what i do is I'm sensing the battery voltage here and I know for example like the max voltage of my battery is 8.8 .8 volts and so what I do is using the Arduino I say once the battery voltage is 8.8 .8 volts instead of having a 5% duty cycle which is what we have normally we then switch it to a 95% duty cycle so now what I do is I'm now sending I'm now sending a high signal in here through to the BJT of the MOSFET and then now 95% of the time the solar input is grounded and so we're only getting a tiny basically nothing uh, input now going through to the battery because why the battery is fully charged and so that's basically how this circuit works so we have our input protection circuit solar sensing circuit switching circuit battery sensing circuit and then we have the output and then the only thing i didn't cover here is this v in so if you look at this v in connector tab here this comes down to this v in here which is the arduino v in and so this arduino can take i believe the nano is uh five volts up to um maybe it's 12 volts maybe a bit higher i'm not sure but so since my battery voltage is going between like you know discharge voltage is probably like six point you know four volts something like that that's probably like the minimum uh, and then the max is up to 8.8 .8 volts so you know the battery is supplying directly my Arduino is connected directly to the battery so the battery when I put the battery input here it's being it's powering the Arduino directly and so the Arduino always has a direct connection to the battery I'm not switching the Arduino or the battery off from the circuit I'm only switching the solar input from the circuit so that's that's the main circuit there um, I'll just quickly touch on some of the other things so here this sensor here is this the TMP36 so this just connects to VCC which is um, the Arduino here 5 volt pin so the Arduino has a uh, has a voltage regulator on it and so that that takes the 8.8 .8 volts that it takes at the V in and then produces a solid 5 volts using the voltage regulator that's on there and so that 5 volt regulator powers this um, temperature sensor it also powers here this display module the SSD1306 which is this really nice looking OLED display. And likewise, the VCC actually also powers the um, INA219 module as well. So then here I've got the output of the temperature sensor, which is my temperature connected to A0, which goes through to the analog input on my Arduino. So that's all that's doing is that's just reading the temperature. And what I would do is when I 3D print a case for it, I would mount the temperature sensor, for example, like this, I need to, you know, kind of isolate the, um, just so I don't short anything out, but I would mount the temp temperature sensor like this, or maybe like something like this. And then, so the temperature sensor is going to be reading the temperature of the battery. And so with nickel metal hydride batteries, I'm kind of going into too much detail here. I apologize. Ugh, I want to keep this short and then I got, I end up waffling. Okay. So how do I describe this simply? Okay. Simple explanation quickly. Nickel metal hydride batteries, they charge like this. The voltage will increase like this and then when it gets to fully charged it dips a bit right so the voltage actually drops so you, you shouldn't actually detect that the battery is fully charged i should just show you i'll show you the charging curve i'll stick it on the screen you shouldn't actually detect the voltage of the battery being fully charged as um by looking at the voltage you shouldn't actually detect that the battery is fully charged by looking at the voltage looking at the temperature is actually a better indicator to say that it's fully charged the, the batteries will heat up when they're fully charged basically so yeah that's what the temperature sensor circuit is there for there to do it's part of the battery sensing circuit the display obviously displays uh all of the um, information uh, on the screen so things like the solar panel current the solar panel voltage the battery voltage the temperature and then here i have two leds the green led is simple it just basically flashes once the battery is fully charged and the red LED is when it detects an error. So 
as part of my program basically an error is anything anytime the current of the solar panel is below 30 milliamps so that's not sufficient you know to charge the battery so may as well disconnect um, the solar input ground it and then let the Arduino sleep so if there's an error then the red LED will flash so for example if the current is below 30 milliamps or if the battery voltage is uh, too low or too high uh, ie is fully discharged or fully charged then again the red LED will flash and then here oddly enough I have a switch as part of this circuit here so you can see D8 pin of the Arduino which is here and then it has a 1k resistor and then a switch and then the switch is going to ground so this is just this push button here it actually has no functionality in the circuit but I added it just as a way to add a menu system so I should have added like four buttons really instead of just the one so I will in my next version so this is version three in my next version I'll add a bunch more buttons so that that way you you can have an actual menu system but i was thinking maybe like for example to use it as an interrupt so if the arduino is sleeping you can press the button to interrupt it to wake it up but at the moment you can just press the reset button as well so i don't know maybe have like a long press feature whereby you long press it and then you know you're able to set a voltage i don't know a set point for your charge voltage or something like that i don't know but i just added that just as an additional feature in case in case there's anything i missed and i want to just add a button that i can use uh and yeah that's it that's how my circuit works so um i wanted to keep this short i apologies for the length take care and uh i'll be doing more videos on this as well cool bye bye oh one more thing uh i'll stick the um i've got all the gerber files on github and um yeah i'll stick the kicad files on github as well now so that way you guys can download this and play about with it yourself. And oh, also, if you have any, I, I wouldn't say like, if you have some massive improvements, obviously this could be massively improved, right? Like, so I'm planning on adding, for example, a MOSFET here and then adding load terminals. So if I had a MOSFET here like this, and then I had some load terminals, I could attach a load here. So obviously there's a lot I could do to improve this. I mean, this, this was as part of my first year project and I was stressed out doing this and I was rushing so there's a lot that could be improved but if you have any like glaringly obvious faults or things that are just outright dumb like if you're just like hammered this switching is stupid you should have switched it like this you would have had way better efficiency or something like that um, anything like that where it's like you know without massively changing the whole circuit how could I improve this if you have anything uh let me know and also if you have any solutions to sensing the uh, solar panel current that would be nice that's something that i'm kind of stuck on because again you know a problem with reverse engineering this is that it, they use this tiny smd ic i'm guessing you can't get that in um through hole and again the purpose of this as i'll show you in this, just right now purpose of this is so that it can be part of an actual teaching kit for beginners to learn how um electronics and stuff like that works so the whole point is that i want it to be part of this you know basic kit that someone can you know buy and use to learn so you know if i have a module that uses smd components that's not ideal for a beginner like imagine explaining to a 14 year old kid what this module does and how it works you know i don't think you're gonna be able to you're gonna have to talk about i squared c buses and stuff like that which you know if you went if you told me about that i squared c in my second year i'd be like what's this kid talking about talk less of like an actual teenager or something like that so yeah anyways any improvements please let me know in the comments thank you for watching Bye bye